Hello and welcome back to our CAD clips on Revit datums, crop regions, and scope boxes. Um, and this is a great demonstration where we uh, will see how we can have nested scope boxes controlling our datum. So this is a, more of a practical example and a demonstration on what we've been learning so far. We'll follow this up with another CAD clip on more technical on how we uh, we build what we see in this particular lesson. So we've got a situation where we have um, four, we've created four different scope boxes as you can see here one two three four and these four scope boxes have different datums associated to them and therefore giving you control in this area we have a vertical shaft in the upper part upper three floors here we've got a scope box around there and that will control the extents of the grid lines associated with this so we'll have a little nested grid when you go to the lower levels the floor plans over here when you get down here, you won't see the grid lines that are from here because those grid lines um, are associated to the scope box and the scope box doesn't extend down beyond that. But at the same time, we can have another scope box that actually encompasses the entire building and then we have um, associated uh, the level datums and the main building grid datums to this scope box. Over here in, in our uh, building B, um, and we can have this all one building or different areas of a building. We can nest these any way we want. So here's our um, scope box that's going to encompass that uh, main building and it's going to have the grid lines associated to the slab edge, etc. Um, associated um, to this scope box as well as the level datums and then there's another scope box nested inside of there here and that is controlling the grid lines for the vertical shaft which goes all the way up through there now you can you'll also notice I've got my levels kind of offset okay so um, you can you can uh, only have uh, a level name has to be unique so you can't have two level ones at different elevations so you have to either um, draw another level at the same level and call it a different name or you can offset your levels but what we want to see here is if we go to my level one we'll look and we have you know some grid lines etc and we have this main building over here and if I click on this scope box and I drag it out it's going to be controlling the main grid line extents and that's all it does okay it doesn't change our model objects it just changes the datums associated to it notice that you don't see that little grid that's up over here okay I've turned all my bubbles on here just so you can see the effect so if I go to my level 2 I'm gonna see I've also extended those around and I can turn that bubble on there as well so and my level 3 because this is all the main scope so all levels over here all the way up to level six are going to change because they're all associated to this big scope box but you'll notice at level five or level six level five and level four there's a little nested grid sitting over here this little nested grid is being controlled by this scope box okay even if we look at this in section right here okay there's that scope box Okay, and I can click on that and I can stretch that up and down wherever I want. I've got my main scope box here as well. Now it looks like my crop region is clipping that a little bit. Yeah, I need to pull my crop region out here on this section. Okay, same thing. This 3D scope box is going, you see these two grid lines, grid line 21 and 22, they're being controlled by the scope box. Okay. And be it even if we go to my level five, okay, there's that same scope box, there's those same grid lines, they're associated. If I click on here and I look at this, this is, this is scope box 25. If I click on this grid line, it's associated to scope box 25. This one is associated to scope box 23. Now these levels over here, building A I should say, not building B, level 1A is over here scope box this is the big scope box and that's going to control the extents you know of that main grid system okay I'm just dragging by the grips and this smaller nested scope box is controlling the extents of these grid lines 
Remember, I can always grab a grid line by a 2D point and drag that down to form a new relationship. Notice that there's the 3D point and there's the 2D point. 3D, 2D. The 3D one is going to be locked to that scope box. Okay, I can take a scope box and I can nudge it by simply moving it. Notice the grid lines on the left hand side, the bubbles are moving over here. Okay, so these four grid lines are associated to this scope box. Now at the same time I can take this grid line and stretch it. That's associated or locked to the opening, but that's a separate activity. Similarly here, I can take this grid line and move it and it changes my slab. Okay, that's just regular Revit behavior. So now just as a recap, okay, scope box here, it also has the levels. Let's go to a south elevation here, okay. There's that same scope box. Look, I'm going to drag it. These levels are going to, you know, associate themselves. I can nudge that in if I want or drag that in, okay. That's the levels because if I click on this scope box and I look at the properties it is scope box 26 and these level lines are associated to scope box 26 so these grid lines are associated to this scope box okay and over here we've got our little little guy up here and then we've got this one controlling those no, look at these level lines watch what happens when I drag this okay because they're associated to this scope box. So in 3D it's easy enough to create scope boxes and again I can stretch them by these grips here if I want. So one, two, three, four scope boxes controlling four different sets of datum. So uh, I'm sure we can find some use for that on some of our bigger projects.